in Los Angeles. And uh, her question was, there's so many temples and so many devotees and so much activities going on all over the world. How do you manage all this? Like, how do you, you know, how do you deal with all this complexity, basically? And Prabhupada's answer was, oh, Krishna is dictating and we are simply following. And she was like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Krishna is telling you and like that, and Prabhupada is just... <laughs> you know, yes. And and then she kept she kept like she couldn't like accept the answer, right? And so Rameshwar was was sitting next to Prabhupada and he and he says, Well actually uh, Krishna is the intelligence within man and uh, so uh, when we get some idea from our own intelligence, then and Prabhupada goes, No. Krishna is directly instructing the spiritual master face to face. I am seeing Krishna face to face. I am hearing from Krishna face to face. That's how I know. That's how I manage everything. And I can tell you from my experience of being a spiritual master, this is true. Prabhupada knew what was in the hearts of all his disciples. Because when you're a spiritual master, you get to, you have to deal with everybody the karma of all your disciples. So you know what's in their hearts. It's hard to explain. But when you take that responsibility, Krishna gives you that information. Why? Because you need it for your service. If you have some service for Krishna and, and you need to know something, Krishna will make you aware of it. Huh? Yes, he's the intelligence within, within man. But he's also a person. And he can speak to you. He can tell you things. He can, he can send you dreams. He can send you intuitions. He can send you all kinds of messages. Huh? And he can also speak directly. So Prabhupada was saying, no, Krishna is directly. See, so these leaders had some different idea from Prabhupada. They thought that Prabhupada was like them. Huh? But no, Prabhupada was on a different platform of consciousness. Prabhupada was in Krishna consciousness, not thinking about Krishna consciousness, not reading about Krishna consciousness, not worshipping the deities of Krishna consciousness. No, he was directly conscious of Krishna. That's Krishna consciousness. It's simple. It's simple if you're simple. <laughs> huh? But if you have a mental block and you think, oh, that's impossible. I can't do it, so how could he do it? Huh? Then maybe you start to speculate and say, well, uh, I can't be conscious directly of Krishna, and I can't imagine how it's possible, so therefore he's just using some fancy language to describe some uh, action of the intelligence which is based on the philosophy. And the, uh, No. Prabhupada said, no. <laughs> Krishna is directly managing. Uh, so, this is Krishna consciousness, but the devotees don't want to believe that. They want to believe it's something indirect. It's some philosophical speculation based on intelligence, based on the scriptures, which they're changing. Um, anyway, we don't see eye to eye <laughs> on this, or actually on anything, because everything is based on this. Huh? If, if the idea is to attain Krishna consciousness, and we have different definitions of the word consciousness, then everything from that point on is going to be different. Okay? Judge by the result. Judge by the result. Huh? If you look at these devotee websites, you see they're fighting like cats and dogs with no resolution possible. Huh? And then they have all these strange ideas, like, oh, we're going to reform ISKCON, we're going to, you know, somehow we're going to take ISKCON back and, and, and heal it and make it good again and everything like that. But they haven't analyzed the problem. Huh? Like, when I was in my job fixing instruments, 
If I went into a, a place and they had some malfunctioning instrument, and I said, oh yeah, we'll just change this part, and we'll change that part, and we'll change the other part, and we'll change this and that. Huh? I wouldn't have a hope of fixing that instrument. Huh? Udava, you know that. If you just go in and you start changing things, you know, in a complicated instrument, you never fix it. You have to diagnose the problem first. Uh, analyze the symptoms, and then determine what malfunction is causing those symptoms. Then you have to find the specific part that's causing the malfunction. Then you start getting out your tools and changing the parts and all that. Uh, first you have to go through the diagnosis. If you go to the doctor uh, and you say, well, doc, I have this. Oh, here, take this medicine. Uh, he hasn't even heard What's wrong with you? He's already giving you the medicine. Are you going to trust this guy? Huh? If you do, you need to go to a, not a doctor, but a psychiatrist. <laughs> huh? No, the doctor, he should hear very patiently. Uh, when, when I move like this, it kind of hurts like this, and it feels funny, and blah, blah, blah. And then he can make the diagnosis. Maybe he does some tests like that. Then he gives the medicine. You see? So spiritual master has to be like that. He has to know how to diagnose the problems, the spiritual disease, the difficulties, the, the different disease of the heart that causes our material conditioning, our contamination, our uh, being trapped in this material world. Why is this particular spirit soul stuck here in this material world? It means he got something wrong somewhere along the line. So we have to restore his understanding to the original. Huh? It's just like if your computer gets a virus or something, huh? to restore it to its original function, you have to get that virus out. You have to clean the software, restore it to its original state. Sometimes you have to reinstall the whole thing, right? But that gets it down back to its original state, and then it will function like it's supposed to. So it's the same thing with us. We have some wrong understanding of spiritual life. And because of that, everything is messed up. We can't live the way we're supposed to live. We can't just be happy. Well, we have to go through all this suffering in the material world. So what does Krishna consciousness do, or what is it supposed to do? It's supposed to reset our software to its original state. Huh? original, uncontaminated, direct, pure consciousness of Krishna. From that platform, we can solve all the problems of our life. So anyway, there's this ongoing misunderstanding between me and my God brothers. And I find this same misunderstanding is there in every other organization of Vaishnavas. Uh, or else we would be part of some larger organization because there's a lot of advantages to associating together and working together on these projects. But if at every stage we come to conflict because of disagreement on the actual philosophy and there's no way to resolve that disagreement, then it's impossible. It's impossible. So, in other words, the... the uh, the devotee community uh, does not want people to know that we have published Vedanta Sutra. They don't want people to read it. They don't want people to buy it. They don't want people to download it. <laughs> they want to keep it a secret. Huh? So this is going on. And why? Because of this fundamental misunderstanding of the basic truth of what is Krishna consciousness. Yeah. It's consciousness. That's why we, we have taken so much trouble to write about consciousness and explain and answer everybody's questions and make it really, really clear what is consciousness and why is consciousness the most important thing and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. Because this is the basic misunderstanding that causes the problem. So we have taken the decision then 
to be completely independent from every other Vaishnava organization. And that's why we don't call this Hare Krishna. Such easy. We don't call our mission Hare Krishna. Because Hare Krishna has become identified, unfortunately, in the, in the public mind with this misunderstanding, with this misinterpretation. Now, when people think of Hare Krishna, they think of monkey on a stick and all of that. Because the, the philosophical misunderstanding then leads to the management misunderstanding. And then the management misunderstanding then leads to the bad behavior of the devotees. Huh? And then sooner or later, it, it manifests in some big trouble, some big problem. And then the whole thing, the reputation of the whole mission becomes ruined. 